Hi parents. How we teach math has changed drastically over the years. In the past, there was one answer and one way to get that answer. Maybe there were two ways to get the answer, but the answer was always the most important part. What if you did everything right, but accidentally forgot to count one of the blocks? What if you could get the answer, but not in the way the teacher showed you that day? Now, the perspective of math is different. We focus on skills and the ability to use a variety of strategies and ways to solve a problem. Yes, counting and number knowledge is important, but instead of only looking at numbers, from one perspective, we show different angles to see the same problem. This helps our students become stronger mathematicians because they can apply their skills and knowledge to any problem they face. So today I'm going to show you the standards and skills that we focus on in our lessons and show you the strategies and tools that we use to solve our math word problems so that you can better help your child and understand what exactly are we doing in math now? This is the Math Strategies Parent Edition. Here are the standards. These are the standards that we focus on in our lessons. The first standard here is count to 100s or 100 in first grade by ones and tens. So we want our students to be able to count one, two, three, all the way to 100 or 120, count by fives as well, and tens. 10, 20, 30, 40. We recognize that counting is a very important aspect of math. And just because I can count to 20, and right now most of our word problems involve these numbers, we need them to have fluency all the way to 100 or 120 in first grade. The next standard is count up to 20 objects in a line, rectangular array or circle to answer how many. So we're usually using about 1 to 20 for our word problems, and we want them to be able to count the, that amount of objects in front of them in a different ways so that they can maybe see it in a line, but that's not the only way they can see the numbers. The next standard is represent addition and subtraction with objects, fingers, mental images, drawings, sounds, acts, acting out situations, verbal explanations, expressions, or equations. Whew, that sounds like a lot. When we are saying represent addition and subtraction, we mean representing in a variety of ways the numbers or the quantities. We can use things like objects, which would be um, cubes, for example. We could actually have the item, for example, if we're saying um, candy bars, we could actually have candy bars present. We do this with the activity with the jar counting often um, in our weekly videos for math. You can count with your fingers and objects and fingers, they're very physical, right? You physically can touch them, you can count them. And that is kind of the, the quickest or the first way that we can really introduce this. Then we move on to a little bit more abstract with mental images, drawings, which are representational of those objects. Sounds like one, two, three. Acting out situations. So we act out perhaps the word problem itself. Verbal explanations, expressions, and equations. And that's all very abstract. So we wanna go from very physical, clear, to more abstract solve subtraction word problems and add and subtract within 10. This is what we've been doing in our videos, adding and subtracting within 10 and sometimes, especially in first grade, within 20. This is important to note because we are trying to get the addition and the subtraction and we do want that fluency of counting, but we also want them to be able to su solve subtraction word problems and add and subtract because even within a subtraction word problem you can create an addition equation we'll see a lot of that as i explain our strategies and in first grade add and subtract within 100. okay 
So let's go ahead and look now at the strategies or how are we solving these math word problems. When solving math word problems, students can use a variety of strategies. They can set up the equation to solve in different ways with addition and subtraction being possible for one word problem. They can use many tools as well. Here are some of the strategies that you can use. Finding the difference, take away, doubles, near doubles, counting on, counting all, decomposing both numbers to get a friendly number. So we're going to see all of these strategies with just two word problems today. Here are some tools. There are many tools that students can use to go along with their strategies. They can use things like a number line, manipulatives like cubes and base 10 blocks, equations and drawings. All of these tools can be used with almost all of these strategies or some combination. So we are not only looking at what strategy or how we're going to solve it, but what tools or things are we going to use to help us solve. So these, the strategies and the tools, these go together to solve our word problem. There are many options to solve any given problem. This is why we typically are teaching in our lessons how to use the information in a word problem to correctly set up an equation, what strategies would be best to use in order to solve the word problem, and what tools are best fit for the strategy and the word problem. All of this helps students learn how to quickly and efficiently solve a variety of word problems. We're going to use this problem to show the strategies counting all, counting on, and decomposing one or both numbers to find a friendly number. Here's our problem. It is a result unknown. Axel has 10 chocolates. Kaylin has two chocolates. How many chocolates do Axel and Kaylin have in all? We are going to start with the strategy counting all, but before we do, we must identify the numbers to create our equation. Frequently, you'll see in the assignments, especially on Seesaw, um, this vocabulary assistance. You see chocolates, and then you see pictures of chocolates. This helps students that are learning the language to build their vocabulary as well as to solve the word problem. In order for students to be able to solve, they need to understand what they are counting, not just the numbers, but what are the numbers for? So here we know that the numbers are representing the amounts of chocolate. So here we see 10 chocolates, this would be Axel's amount, and two chocolates, this would be Kaylin's amount. And then down here you see a sentence. It says they have mm chocolates in all. This sentence helps our students understand what exactly does a full sentence answer require? How does it look if I answer my problem? It looks like this sentence. And I know the number that I'm gonna find is going to show how many chocolates there are in all. There are always key words that we have to watch out for in our word problems. In all is one of them. So first, before we start our strategy, we have to identify what in the problem represents the two parts that we are going to add together to make the whole. Two students have two quantities of chocolate and the question asks, how many chocolates are there in all? To solve, we have to put the two parts together to get the whole. To begin, when reading a word problem, it is important to circle the two, or more in the future, numbers and what that number is representing, in this case, chocolates. So here, I'm going to circle our two numbers. We see Axel has 10 chocolates, so I'm going to circle 10 chocolates. Kaylin has two chocolates. Again, I'm gonna circle two chocolates. And then the next step is to look at our question. What do we do with these numbers we are given? The question will drive how we write our equation. In this case, the question asks, how many chocolates do Axel and Kaylin have in all? In all is a key phrase, en total in Spanish. That tells me I'm going to put two amounts together here. 
So we know we are going to put two amounts together to find a whole, or we will create an addition equation. I know I have two parts and that they want the whole. So I will write 10 to represent the 10 chocolates of Axel plus two to represent the two chocolates of Kalen equals and a question mark because we don't know what our total is yet. I have a choice with this equation of many strategies, but I said I would start with the first strategy, counting all or contar todo. So if I have to count all, what am I going to use to count all? I am going to use something that helps me visualize 10 and two to count. I can use cubes, counters, fingers, etc. I can also draw a representation of cubes, counters, fingers, etc. They could also use uh, tools like a number line. In this strategy, we are going to use this tool called a 10 frame. It's a 10 frame because each of these frames has 10 boxes inside of it. This strategy is perhaps one that a majority of the students feel most comfortable with using in the beginning. This is because it allows them to count an amount of objects or drawings one by one. When beginning to make connections between quantities and objects, this is the easier way to help students forge those connections. So, in order to count all with a 10 frame, I'm going to draw or fill in each circle inside of one box. That represents one chocolate. So in order to count all, we're going to count all the way to 10, and then we are going to keep counting. So let's count all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two. Okay, so now I've drawn all of my, my dots or my circles within my 10 frame. So we can count all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So how many chocolates are there in all? My answer is 12. So there are 12 chocolates in all. Awesome. In the case of this problem, the number has 10. So we know we can group the objects or drawings in five and five or 10 and 10. This helps them begin to get accustomed to seeing a quantity and connecting immediately to a number. Little by little, this can help them move away from counting all and visually see the amount quickly. Now we're going to look at another strategy. The next strategy is called counting on or seguir contando. For this strategy, we will use the same equation 10 plus 2 equals. We will then identify the bigger number. We begin with that bigger number in counting on. In this problem, the bigger number is. 10. So here we see the number 10. Tools that can be used to solve with this strategy are identical to the tools in the first strategy. Number line, counters, drawings. We are going to use a number line. The number line is a great tool for this strategy because it helps students visually see the number they are starting with and counting up to see the end number. We can use the number line for counting on because we don't yet know the whole. When we use the number line, we say we jump or saltar, and we put a dot on the number line um, that we want to start with. Here it's 10. So I'm going to put a dot at 10. And we jump the other number of times to get our total. So the other number is 2. So we're going to jump two times. One, 
two. I jumped two more times after 10. So what is my answer? Exactly, it's 12. But remember, we have to always answer with a full sentence. So my full sentence answer would be, there are 12 chocolates in all. I always try to make sure that I use the same phrases in the question as the answer. This is a bit more abstract for students than a drawing or an object, but is still visually representing the quantities. We see the numbers and we can see them in the order in which they occur. Now we're going to look at another strategy for this exact same word problem. The last strategy for this word problem is decompose a number or descomponer un numero. This is perhaps the most abstract strategy you are going to see. This is only using numbers and math facts. Decomposing a number is breaking a number into smaller numbers to make the addition a bit friendlier. The numbers in this problem are quite friendly, but I'm going to change them for the purpose of showing you this example. Okay, those numbers are a little bit less friendly. So if Axel has eight chocolates plus Kaylin's four chocolates, we wanna know how many they have in all. Now I see eight plus four equals eight and four to students can seem a bit overwhelming or daunting, but decomposing can help make seemingly difficult equations into much easier ones. So I have eight and four. My friendly number is going to be 10. We teach many math facts around 10 so that it should be easier to solve than eight. I know eight and two make 10. So I'm going to break four into two and two because two plus two equals four. So here we represented by showing at the four coming out two lines and we write the two numbers that we are breaking four into, two and two. So now I have eight, two and two. So I'm going to circle the eight and one of the twos from the four to make 10 because eight plus two equals 10. But I haven't finished. I still have this last two. So now my equation says 10 plus two equals, and for many students, this is much easier to solve. 10 plus two equals 12. That is decomposing one of the numbers. You can also decompose both numbers if need be to make two friendly numbers. Now remember, we always answer in a full sentence to ensure we have answered our question and we are clear. So there's always the sentence stem at the bottom of our problems that we saw in the beginning that we are using to help guide students to learn what a complete answer sounds and looks like. This helps them both with the language of word problems and make sure their answer makes sense. So there are 12 chocolates in all. Now we are going to look at a different word problem to solve using some more strategies. Here I have a comparing word problem. It says Mona's hair grew seven centimeters. Claire's hair grew 15 centimeters. How many centimeters less did Mona's hair grow than Claire's? Now this word problem is a little bit more complicated and we are going to use three different strategies to solve this word problem. Here you see again that vocabulary assistance with a picture of hair and the word hair. In Spanish, you would have a picture of hair and the word cabello or pelo. And here you see the sentence for the answer. It says, Mona's hair grew mm centimeters less than Claire's. Because it says less than, it is important that we include these sentences to help students understand that Usually when we're comparing, they think of bigger or more, but here it's not bigger or more, it's actually less or smaller. So when we are looking at this, we can actually solve this word problem, not only with addition, but with subtraction as well. So with the information here, we are going to make first a subtraction equation. So this is a comparing word problem, comparing the length of growth of the two girls' hair. Claire and Mona. 
one girl's hair grew shorter or less than the other. The question is by how much? So we are going to subtract the growth of Mona's hair from the growth of Claire's hair. So we start with the larger growth, which we know because we read and we circle is 15 centimeters. And here we see seven centimeters for Mona. And let's remember, we always have to underline our question. How many centimeters less did Mona's hair grow than Claire's? So you have the question and the two numbers that we have in this word problem. Right now we have seven centimeters, 15 centimeters, and our question. If I'm subtracting, I know I need to start with the larger number, which in this case is 15. And I need to take away the lesser amount, which is seven, to find my difference. So I have 15 minus seven equals, we're going to look at a strategy called taking away or quitar in order to solve this subtraction equation. Here I have taking away quitar. And we have our subtraction equation, 15 minus seven equals. Now I'm going to have to decide what tool am I going to use to take away? When we do this, we typically draw the first number. So my tool is usually drawing. I can also use a number line for this strategy. I can use my fingers and objects as well. But right now we're going to draw. And I'm going to start drawing the bigger number or the more centimeters. And I'm going to draw squares that represent one centimeter. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15. Now I made this into three rows of five. So instead of using the actual 10 frame, I sort of put my pictures in that same format of rows of five. So we have five, 10, 15, okay? Now I'm going to take away or tachar in Spanish, the other number seven. So I'm gonna cross out seven of these cubes that represent the 15 centimeters. So we're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I just crossed out seven and then we can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there is an eight centimeter difference. But that's not the only way to solve using this exact strategy. When I know my numbers a bit better, I might know that seven is really five and two. So we're sort of using that decomposing a number. And I know each of my rows are five. So I can quickly cross out one row of five and then two more. And I know this is a row of five, so I can just say five, six, seven, eight. So that's another way to use the same strategy and the same tool, but in a faster, more efficient manner. Or, I can count down. So I can say 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Because I can visually see what 7 looks like, 5 and 2, I can actually count down and solve quicker. So there are many ways to go about even one strategy using a tool that can be faster or slower. So I had each of these cubes representing centimeters. And my sentence 
is going to include centimeters. So Mona's hair grew eight centimeters centimeters less than Claire's. So it is important to always answer in my complete sentence using the words like less than from my question. All right, now we're going to look at another strategy. This strategy is doubles or near doubles or dobles, dobles más o menos uno. So here we see again we have the same subtraction equation 15 minus 7 equals question mark. So I know my doubles and again this is a very abstract strategy because this is just using what you know your math facts and equations. I know that 7 is half of 14 or double 7 is 14. And I know 14 is just one less than 15. So if I say seven plus seven plus one, I can get my answer. So what is seven plus one? Exactly, it's eight. So, seven plus eight is gonna give me 15. This seems complicated, but when you know your doubles and what number is half of another number, then you will be able to solve much quicker. And this is something that we use when we practice our fluency frequently and when we do our number studies. They help us that information of this is one less than, one more than, and this is double or this is half, all of that information that we learn during our fluency time helps us to solve our word problems faster. Now we're going to use one more strategy. Now this strategy is called finding the difference, encontrar la diferencia. This strategy is a little bit different because I'm going to need to make my subtraction into a, an addition problem. So I know that 15 is the longer amount of hair. And we are saying that there is seven centimeters plus some amount of centimeters gets us to 15. So I'm going to actually write seven plus some number equals 15. This way we can find the difference between seven and 15. To solve using finding the difference, I'm gonna use a number line again. Okay, here's my number line. So instead of just counting on like we did before we using the number line, I'm going to identify where I'm going to start, seven, and where I'm gonna end, 15. Because in counting on, we don't know our total or our whole. But here we do. We know that the larger number is 15. The answer is 15. And we know that the smaller number is seven. And we're trying to find what is the space in between those two numbers. So we're going to start at our number seven and we're going to count up to 15. But instead of going eight, nine, 10, I already have my point at 15. I know where I'm going to stop. So I'm going to count one, two. So each jump or salto is going to be one. Ready? Let's jump and count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So seven plus eight equals 15. And remember, we always have to answer in a full sentence. Mona's hair grew eight centimeters less than Claire's. So I just used six different strategies to solve two word problems. That means that we can use a multitude of strategies to solve even just one problem. That's important for our students to both understand and be able to practice. 
maybe sometimes I'll see that finding the difference is the easiest way for me. But maybe at other times, counting on or counting all. It's very important that our students can practice all of these strategies in order to be able to have a well-rounded pool of strategies and tools and techniques to pull from in any different kind of word problem. So I hope that this information has helped you today and you feel more comfortable when you're doing your math work with your children. Bye for now.